Simon, cut that thing off. Matilda says play us some red hot boogers for a new papa. Pretty boy brown. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call you Bill Street Mama for nothing. You spells class in Chapter 11. Thanks for the compliment, but you're not so bad yourself. 
Oh, I'm just a country boy trying to get along. I ain't nowhere. You're headed in the right direction. You know, honey, I think I'm going to like you a whole lot. Who is your sweet man? That depends. Depends on what? On whether or not you can live up to your reputation. You mean that you could like me too? Why do you think I'm giving you this birthday party? Gee, honey. until next week. And what's that got to do with the money you have in the bank? I ain't got it. All I had was that $542 I draw out and paid on that car for you. You get out of my face. that out in the hall, baby? Jealous? A little. Oh, that was just my policy writer. I've got to win some money, you know. Do I get in of it? Maybe. I guess I can get a little bit from you this morning. From who? From you, that's who. I always let you have something when I win, don't I? News, listen, News. I ain't in no mood for real. What is you talking about? I'm talking about money. That's what I'm talking about. Didn't you play them numbers last night? What numbers? Them numbers on that new automobile you bought from Matilda May Grind. Well, oh, did you play them? No, I didn't. Well, I'll be... Man, don't you know that them numbers run one, two, three on policy last night? Well, I... when I saw them drawings this morning, I know just well... Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got the drawings right here in my pocket. Here it is. Look at that. See that? Look. 11, 19, and 40. There it is. You see them, don't you? Right down the middle. Look at them. Why, man, everybody in town caught some on them numbers but me and you. Catfish won 50. 
Little Froggy caught 1750, and Pretty Boy Brown won over 200. How come you didn't play? My reason for not playing is the same as yours. Broke. Did you say broke? Yes, broke. Well, I know there was something wrong with you when I seen Matilda riding Pretty Boy Brown in that automobile you bought for her. That's what I say about pretty women. When you flush with dough, they love you long. But when your scratch gets low, they're up and gone. Well, I guess I'll go down to Playland and see what I can scratch up for myself. You know, I need some scratch myself. See you later. Mr. Brown asked me to tell you to be out in a very few moments, Miss Grimes. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Tell him that I'll wait. I certainly will. Hello, darling. Hello. Gee, honey, I'm sorry I kept you waiting, but that barber is slower than the horses I bet on. I don't mind. But aren't you forgetting something? No, precious. I thought you wouldn't like being kissed out in public like this. Usually I don't, but today we have a very special audience. Well, I'll reach them. If it isn't my good friend and brother, the genial gentleman from Jackside Jones. Long time no see. Long time. And how's the word serving you, Mr. Jones? Well, I, 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 I... Well, now, that's fine. That's fine. Now, you know me, don't you? I reckon. Well, well, of course you do. And tell me, how is that luscious bit of brown sugar Miss Matilde may dry? Well, well she, she, she's all right. Now, I reckon... isn't that nice now? You know, Mr. Jones, it makes me very happy indeed to know that you two are still in the groove. But I feel... Oh, oh, yes, yes. I know exactly what you're trying to say, Mr. Jones. Why, every satin pop on Beale Street thought that Matilda was taking you for a ride just to clip you for your scratch. Ah, but you fooled her, Mr. Jones. You fooled her. But you see, Matilda and I is a... Uh, uh, oh, uh, I know a gink that offered a bet two to one that she'd pick poor Robin clean inside of three months. Well, what I'm trying to say is, uh, 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 uh... Yes, but that was six months ago. Three months longer than they thought you'd last. But you fooled them, Mr. Jones. You fooled them. And I'm glad of it. I'm glad because all them sharp cats think that good looks, good hair, and good clothes are the only answer to a woman's dream. They don't know, like you do, Mr. Jones, that some women want money sometimes. But, uh, Mr., uh, uh, uh... Uh, uh, uh Fletcher. Uh, Elias P. Fletcher, ace reporter for the Beale Street Bugle, and a man with a nose for news. News? That's right, Mr. Jones, news. What did he tell you about me? What did who tell whom about which? What did news tell you about me and Matilda? What did news tell me about you Oh, well, now I'm beginning to see the light, Mr. Jones. I'm beginning to see the light. You are talking about your good friend, Henry Bad News Johnson. 
and that little slip of the lip makes me know that some slick rat has been nibbling on your cheese, Mr. Jones. You know, I've been thinking that maybe Bad News Johnson knows why Pretty Boy Brown is seen riding around so much in that beautiful car that your money bought and paid for, Mr. Jones. <laughs> well, perhaps you're not in the mood to talk about affairs so close to the heart at an hour so close to dinner time. So, in that case, I'll be running along, Mr. Jones. But in the meantime, I might run into a friend of yours who sees all, knows everything, and will stop at telling nothing. Good day, Mr. Jones. Bad news ain't gonna tell you nothing about me. Listen, my dear Mr. Jones, for 25 cents cash, Bad News Johnson would throw a brick at a hearse. Good day, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Oh, another good day like yesterday. We'll be ready to move on. Yeah. By the time the cops get wise, we'll be knee-deep in clover. <laughs> you said it. That's Griffin the Sparrow. I thought they'd be down early this morning. Oh, they've been here and gone. The Sparrow had a little deal down on Front Street, and I sent Griff along just to keep an eye on him. That's a good idea, boss. I'm afraid of that Sparrow. I bet all the tea in China he'd sing if the cops ever picked him up. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Where's the sparrow? That was a trap, ball. The cops came in just as we were turning the trick. They were staked back in the back room, but I got to wait. And if you know what I think about the spare, we'll pack up and get out of here before the cops make him talk. That's what I say too, boss. All right, that's what we'll do. Let you hustle over to the garage and get the car and meet me at the hotel. Okay, boss. Griff, you hustle over to the hotel, pack up our bags, and I'll be over there just as soon as I fix up everything here. Right, boss. The cops are coming. No, 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 not that. They're already in the building. They're coming up the stairs. They all they got Flint. They got Flint? Have a seat, gentlemen. I'll be right with you. Get out the colony, Bonham. You're under arrest. Get up. Stand over there with that other rat.
Maybe they threw it out the window. But that won't get the minute. We've got enough evidence. I don't see nothing down there. Go away, don't you see I'm busy? Oh, but I listen. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. what do you want? All I wanted to ask you is what was all that parade and all that stuff out there with that, That's all I wanted to ask you. Is that so? But all I want to ask you is what did you tell Eli Fletcher about me and Matilda? Man, who told you? I told Eli Fletcher anything about you and Matilda. Him that cigar, that's who. Oh, who ever heard of any cigars telling anybody anything about anybody else? Oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, where you get that stuff from? Mm -hmm. Listen, news. Them that cigars you got there called 15 cents a piece. Seven times 15 and 75. You just got to eat the turn of beans and corn juice. Because you got pot liquor on your tie and crumbs on your mouth. That all. Of course. You trying to figure how much it costs? That's right. That didn't call for two bits, that's all it costs. All right. Two bits for you, them. 
six bits with them three gone. That falls a dollar. Now, where'd you get the money? All I told Eli is that, that you and Matilda wasn't doing so for it. Now, that's all I told him. And when I told him that, he laughed and said, <laughs> a blind horse knows when the trough is empty. That's all I told him. I didn't tell him nothing else. Well, Mr. Johnson, you can go back and tell Mr. Fletcher that the trough ain't quite empty. Good God and just... Man, what bank you done robbed? Man with brains don't have to rob no bank, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, but you ain't got no... Oh, ain't got no what? You ain't got about three dollars you can let me have until Friday. Three dollars? Yeah, you see, uh, uh, I got my clothes in pawn down, and I got a date tonight, and I was just as keen as a kid, and I was broke as the Ten Commandments. Yes, sir. Him. I ain't got no small change like two dollars. Take twenty. You might need it. Man, you don't know how much I appreciate this favor you was doing me. <laughs> yes, of course, I promised to take them two girls out tonight, and I didn't have a crying dime. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Yes, sir. And, uh, All right, go ahead on and say it. I got an idea. That's all you ever did have was ideas. That is. Yeah, but you see, these two girls I'm taking out tonight, they ain't never been to no nightclub and nothing like that. And they asked me to bring a friend. How about you? I don't know about that, me. Oh, you see, I ain't never been to no nightclub. And furthermore, I ain't got none of them kind of clothes. Oh, we can fix that all right. All you need is a tuck, and <laughs> we can rent that. <laughs> and man, when Matilda sees you with this pretty little brown I'm going to introduce you to tonight, ooh, she's going to get jealous and burn up. And remember, when a woman gets jealous, she likes you. How you know she'll see us? Oh, she'll see us all right. We'll make every spot in town, and she's bound to see us. What do you say? Remember now, the billy goat gets in his heart as liquid and looks like going back out of the fight. Yeah, but I ain't no billy goat. Yeah, but you got money. And Christmas without a holiday is like a candle without a wick. What do you say? I can we wear some clothes then. <laughs> now you talking. <laughs> I told you you had sense. You talk like a man's got some sense. Come on, man, let's go. <laughs> Somewhere. Somebody is being dead in some effort.
Gentlemen, it's now showtime at the keyhole. I know no better way to get started than to present the entertainment in an old original number, a sensational saxophone duet of Michael Griffin and Jack Sims in Eclipse. Let's give him a nice hand and start them off. Thank you. Gentlemen, I give to you that sensational comedy team, Alan and Alan. <laughs> Woman, you around here talking about you women as better than us men. How you get that way? Every woman you ever laid your eyes on, baby, is better than that man you know. Huh. Look at here, baby. Us men have always been better than you women. To prove it, I'll tell you what you do. What? You take all the women in the audience, and I'll take all the men in the audience. That suits me. Go ahead and take your women. All right, girls. Are you with me? That's a good deal. Stick with me, because I'm going to get him. All right, I'm going to take the men. Are you with me, men? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right, baby. Tell me one thing. 
that makes you women so much greater than us men. Go ahead and tell me that. You want to know one thing that makes us women much greater than you men? I sure do. Talk to me. Go ahead. If it wasn't for the women, uh -huh. who would you men get to sew buttons on your pants? Let me get you straight, baby. You said if it wasn't for you women, who would we men have to sew buttons on our pants? That's right. Baby, did you ever stop to think if it wasn't for you women, we men would have to wear no damn pants? That's what I'm talking about. Now, look here, baby. You know what, babe? What? You keep running around here talking about you women telling us men, you making me mad, baby. That's your business. Woman, I take my fist and I try to knock your brains out. I'll tell you, I'll tell you about that. Yes, buddy, and I'll put you in jail. What you gonna do about it? I'm on black guy. Go ahead and die, woman. Got to I'm on kid you, woman. What about it? Come here, come here, look here. Didn't I hear you say you're gonna put this long, tall man in jail? That's right. If it do, mama, don't be here when I get out. Why? I'll put some in the scars on your head, huh? Take my razor and I'll cut you through it, too. Yeah. The avalanche will be waiting and the undertaker's too. The student doctor's baby is offering a whole lot of money for you. Yeah. Now, the undertaker, baby, he lives right down the street. He got two white horses and they got eight black uh -huh. But I ain't gonna say this. No. I'm gonna keep you for myself. I love I'm you. gonna cut you, woman. Cause a piece ain't no bigger than that in there. If you put them, no, come in there. Don't be here when I get out. I'll be through you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it's indeed a pleasure to present the entertainment, a charming personality with a terrific voice. So I give to you at this time, for your entertainment, Joyce McElrath. Let's give her a nice hand. When the sun sets every day on the streets down Memphis way, sitting at her window, the old street mama is sighing, crying. All the gas, she twisted men and knocked them dead, but that was before.
hold that bugle. I'm going to show you guys how to dance. I didn't whistle you the boss around here. I'm the head waiter, sir. Send me over some waiters over here. I'll send one over right away. One ain't gonna be enough. Send four. But, sir. But no but. <laughs> I want waiters. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I want service and I'm paying for everything. <laughs> here, take this 20. Buy yourself a couple of cigars. Thank you, sir. Thank Never you, mind sir. the thing. Let's get them waiters over here. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you gentlemen sure must have lots of money. Oh, uh, well, we is, and uh, we ain't. You see, Miss Rosie, big businessmen like we are, we don't ever have a lot of cash money. And most of our money is tied up in our business. So I bet we ain't got over... Uh, uh, I bet we ain't got over three or four hundred thousand dollars in cash right now to save our lives. <laughs> oh, that's a lot. <laughs> Mr. Don must be the charge of your company. You seem to be carrying all the money. Oh, no, no. It ain't like that, Miss Rosie. No, no. You see, it's like this. When me and Mr. Jones get ready to go out on a party to have a good time, now, which ain't very often, we both take the big roll of money. But before we leave the office, uh, we throw up a $20 gold piece to see who starts spending for it. If it comes here, I spend for it. If it comes here, Mr. Jones spends for it. Well, then Mr. Jones won the last house. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> What's the matter, honey? Don't you feel well? Oh, I have a slight headache, but I'll be all right in a minute. I'll get you an aspirin. Thank you. Hey, y'all, darling, take one of these. Oh, uh, thanks. Will that be anything else, sir? No, that'll be all. Will that be all for you, sir? Oh, uh, yes, that's all. Uh, no, just a moment. I'll uh, make that four egg with that steak instead of two. <laughs> and double up on them french fried potatoes. <laughs> you know I like to eat. <laughs> yeah. We're really having a nice time now, Mr. Jones, but you didn't seem to be having any fun when we first came in. Yes, I know. But you see, I had something bothered when I first came in. But last year, coos fell, coos off powerful. And a man meets a sweet little girl like you. Oh, <laughs> you flatter me, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right over that way. <laughs> 
There's someone over there I want to see. Yes, go ahead, please. You know, it's a real pleasure, Mr. Bryant, to have you with us. Well, it is an honor that a lonely sweet people is honored in the presence of a gorgeous young lady like you, Mrs. Grant. Well, uh, when I, uh... Never mind the flowers. What's cooking? Oh, chicken. Chicken? Yes. Three chickens. Two young pullets and a tough old hen. <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, but you will. Because when them two young pullets come back and sit down at this table, I know a tough old hen if he just start the ball. Now, you listen here, Mr. Jones. Now, you listen. I've been listening long enough. Now, you listen to me. You thought I was busted, did you? You thought I didn't have no more money in the bank, did you? Well, I didn't have no more than that. Thank goodness. Three other banks in this town. And I got money in every one of them. I ain't got nothing but money. You sold out for a measly five hundred and forty dollars when you could have wrote your own ticket for any amount you could count. You played me for a chump. You got sent to Georgia yourself. Too many women in the world for me to worry about one woman. Four or five years ago, I was five women to ever one man. But today, it's ten times that many. And when a man has got as much money as I got, right here in my pocket, can buy him by the dirt, just like you can eat, and for the same price. Yeah, you thought I was broke, but you wrong. See here? Take a good look. Because there's enough money in that road to burn up a wet mule, and plenty more where that come from. Where? Yeah, where did I get it? Yeah, I know. But I'm going to tell you, this is just my refund for my income tax payment. Now, you get out of my face. Come on. We are going home. Children are exactly alike. They got to be spanked once in a while. Only you don't spank them both in the same place. I guess you're right about that. Because when a man has got as much money as I got here in my pocket, he just don't have to. Lou, mm -hmm. do you see what I see? No, what do you see? I see the law. Well, what of it? I see them, too. You ain't stole nothing, is you? No, I ain't stole nothing. Well, I ain't neither. Not lately. And well, I see that man with him. He rented us these clothes this afternoon. Huh? I wonder who they're looking for. I don't know. The way they're pointing over here towards this table, they don't found who they're looking for. Listen, July. 
Where'd you get all them $20 bills you got in your pocket? I found them. Found them? Where? Down on Beale Street. July, you was in a tight spot. Folks don't lose all that money you found in no Beale Street. And if Detective Gafford and Kimball sees you with all them $20 bills in your pocket, hot springs water won't help you none. You got to get out of here. But how? I don't know. But when that music starts playing and these folks start to dance, and you follow me. Wait a minute, here comes the girl. <laughs> Can I have some of that good old coffee? Darling, pass me the sugar, please. Baby, I'm sure it's that you're going to stay mad at me. For taking them girls out to the cabaret. I'm sure I don't like I did last night. That was Rue's idea. Not mine. Rose said you were running out on me. The pretty boy Brown. Because you thought I was broke. But I... But, uh, but you what? Where am I? Brother, if you don't know where you is, I can sure tell you where you ain't. You in jail. Me too. about to call you. I've got a case for you. Yes, counterfeit. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm holding two colored boys here in my office now. So they found the stuff down on Beach Street. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bully for you. <laughs> Now then, uh, what do you want me to do with these two colored boys I've got over here? Okay. Well, 
Come on and see us sometime. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Well, so long. Boys, I've just had a talk with Mr. Joe Kennedy of the United States Department of Justice. They arrested those counterfeiters in a building on 4th near Beale Street, just before you found that package of bogus money. One of my men, uh, one of the men threw uh, the money out the window, and when my men got downstairs, uh, it was gone. But uh, we have got enough evidence on them to send them up for life. We have found the counterfeiters. Kennedy has left your case up to me, and I'm going to, going to turn you loose. Now get out. <laughs> get out. Here they come, boys. I want you to give them a good working over. We'll show them about giving us a kind of fit 20. Won't we, Pee Wee? That's right. Let's do it. Don't be 